Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. Today, I have a bit of a treat, a change of pace. We're looking at a watch you can't buy, at least not yet. This is the factory prototype of the H. Moser & C. Pioneer Cylindrical Tourbillon Skeleton. So, this watch, not yet available, again, anywhere, is the prototype. So, there may be some changes. What is here is already excellent. Reach out to T. Masso at thewatchbox.com if you want more details as they become available. So, this is a very well-finished prototype. Caveat, Prototypes are subject to change, but so far we have the standard stainless steel Pioneer 42.8 millimeter case. Refreshing, this watch is actually thinner than claimed. It's usually the opposite with watches. They claim 15.3, I measure 15.1. From lug tip to lug tip, it is 51.1 millimeters, and there is a 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs. We'll throw it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, and you will note that the watch is easy to wear. Although broad across the wrist, it's not huge across the wrist. I would describe this watch as being suitable for a wrist of 15 centimeters circumference, or perhaps perhaps larger, but 15 centimeters being the lower limit. The watch is not particularly thick, and with a dramatically sloped cambered sapphire and a domed bezel, it should have no real problem fitting underneath most cuffs. But just to be safe, assume it'll fit underneath any jacket cuff with perhaps some exotic sleeves, like French cuffs being the exception. Taking a quick look at the watch, you can see that it's beautifully finished. Moser machines and hand finishes its cases, which is how it gets some of these details, such as the depth of the hollows on the case flank. You have coining within a polished flank, and then on the top you can see there's a little bit of faceting, and we have satin finish. The bezel is all of high polish. The mid case is all of high polish. We have a conical crown with a Moser logo outboard. It's all of satin finish, and then the watch includes a strap which is a sort of new buck leather. Now, this is where things may change because typically Moser likes to use kudu leather on its watches. So you may get this calf skin with a new buck texture or you might get a suede kudu. Either way, you're going to be getting a top grade factory strap. Uh, you can see on the bottom, if you were to get this strap, it would have calf skin. And then we have a pin buckle to match the watch. And this is something that Moser often does. They create pin buckles that echo the design of the case. So here we have a combination of satin, polish, and then we have this coining that you also find in the case flank. Screw down crown, genuine sports watch, 120 meters water resistant. What sets this apart is the openness and visibility of the movement. So right here we have Moser caliber HMC 811. It is effectively one and the same of the dial, but let's focus down for a moment on the dial part of the watch face. The dial, as you'll note, is convex. It features black polished hands and solid blocks of a material called globalite, which is a luminescent solid, and you're going to see it right now. The watch is quite easy to read, and you can see that there are large globalite inserts on the hands themselves, so you'll never be at a loss to tell the time. Now, the watch opens up the movement, so all of the fun parts are on the dial side. You can see we have a elaborately detailed flying tourbillon with immense height, and the best finished components of the watch are actually the tourbillon carriage assembly and then the keyless works and the clutch. And we'll talk about those in turn, but the tourbillon takes pride of place. Now, it is a one-minute tourbillon. It is a free-sprung balance. It is beating away at 21,600 vibrations per hour, and it actually features two overcoils, one at the top and then one at the bottom. The cylindrical hairspring takes 10 times as long to create as a standard flat hairspring would, and it's important because historically, marine chronometers and fine navigation clocks would be equipped with cylindrical hairsprings featuring overcoils. Now, Moser exceptionally makes its own balances, escapements, and yes, hairsprings in-house. So this cylindrical hairspring is a work of precision engineering, which is Moser's micro-mechanical subdivision. There's a lot to love here. The reason a cylindrical hairspring with double overcoils is used is because it keeps the best time in any position relative to gravity. Its mass is the most centered of any type of hairspring, so at at any given angle, there's less off-centered mass to change the timing of the watch. Now, I mentioned that the keyless works is particularly charismatic from a finishing standpoint. You can see that. The components are in steel. They're satinated on their top, and they're micro-beveled on their edge. And you can see the motion works, or at least you can see the 
intermediate wheels that are used to drive the motion works. Properly speaking, the motion works is under the dial. You can also see the clutch mechanism. You can see the winding pinion and the crown wheel and their meshing brigade teeth right in there. It's actually a wonderfully positive feel as you operate the clutch system. That's not universal on watches. It's a real part of the pleasure of owning this one. Now, you can wind the watch, but it can also wind itself. You can see on the reverse side, not only has the movement been skeletonized, but so is the rotor. In fact, so is the mainspring barrel, and you can gain understanding over time of roughly what level of mainspring coiling corresponds to how much power reserve. So it's there for aesthetics, but also as a sort of informal power reserve. Now there is a magic lever style pole-based winding system. You can see it right here, pivoting on ceramic rotor bearings. This is a bi-directional winding, pole-based winding system with a 74-hour power reserve. You've got that one-minute tourbillon, and all of this pivoting on 28 joules. It is a very, very impressive achievement. And I should go so far as to say that not only is this a more enticing and alluring tourbillon, but it's finished a little bit better even than a standard Moser watch. Normally, Moser watches are finished in a handsome and fairly workmanlike manner that I would compare to, for example, Chagher Le Coult or Audemars Piguet, but particularly around the tourbillon carriage and the tourbillon cage and the uh, keyless work system, there's a level of finish here that is a step above and even higher high horology as it were. Again, prototype watch, but you can see that so far, Moser has decided on using a sort of nickel anthracite coating across the skeletonized bridges. The bridges, of course, are made of brass, and they are covered with this nickel anthracite to give them more of an industrial aesthetic. You can see that the wheels all have a more conventional silver coating on them. And then we have this lovely rose gold rotor with the Moser logo, and you can see it's open, airy. All the mass or as much as possible, concentrated outboard for the maximum polar moment or turning force. A sports watch that's also high horology that also comes from a fun independent that does things its own way. This dial color, it's called funky blue. The fade, Moser calls that a fume. Moser, making between about 1,500 and 2,000 watches a year, is a fully integrated manufacturer out of Schaffhausen. If that sounds familiar, you're thinking of IWC, their larger neighbor, which makes over 100,000 watches per year year. Of course, Moser making only 2000 at the most. A wonderful way to get into independent brands. If you've already tasted the mainstream of independence, the likes of FP Journe, for example, this is the logical next step. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.